En af de største byer i dette område er Torki, der ligger i regionen Devon, og byen er både historisk og idyllisk. Det er her, du møder det herskabelige England. Og her er der en person, vi ikke kan komme udenom, og det er Dame Agatha Christie. I'd say the main highlight, obviously, is Torquay Museum. Um, but we have an Agatha Christie mile as well, which is, as the name suggests, it's a walk of a mile that covers really the highlights of where Agatha Christie lived and where she liked to hang out when she was, she was young and she grew up in Torquay, because Torquay was a huge influence on Agatha Christie, as was the rest of South Devon. But also, if you're if you're in this area, the place to go, aside from the museum, is also Agatha Christie's home or one of her homes, Greenway, which is absolutely fantastic and beautiful. I think it's fair to say that she has really put Torquay on the map. There are two people who are very, very famous in Torquay. One of them is Agatha Christie, and the other one is Basil Fawlty from Fawlty Towers. <laughs> which uh, and I think a lot of Monty Python fans are aware of Faulty Towers as well. But certainly Agatha Christie um, is the person that most people identify with um, Torquay with. Et andet sted, hvor vi heller ikke kan komme udenom Dame Agatha Christie, er på byens ældste hotel. We're in the Grand Hotel in Torquay, so we're based in Devon, that's southwest of England. Um, it's a very old sort of Victorian um, Art Deco style hotel um, built in 1881. Um, it was built in 1881 on the extension of the uh, Great Rail um, line coming into the southwest in Devon, um, and it started off originally as a 12 bedroom hotel. And from there, it's expanded. It's got a lot of history, um, namely to do with Agatha Christie as well, um, who had a honeymoon here. In fact, we've got room 216 for the Agatha Christie suite, which is named after her due to her honeymoon. Um, so yeah, it's got a lot of history. It's one in the World War II. It was used as sort of a medical center for the RAF um, and sort of a barracks. Um, so there's certain areas of the hotel which actually have behind the wallpaper um, graffiti or you know, notes or writing from uh, that that time of time of history. So yeah, it's got a lot of history and it's uh, been developed over the years into what it is now and that's a 132 bedroom hotel. So it's a big development actually when you think about it over the years. So. It's a four star hotel. Um, we have a rosette in our main restaurant um, and we are looking to currently go to two rosette level. So it's very nice quality food. Um, so it meets expectations um, and for quality, it's all homemade produce, all made in house, so nothing's uh, purchased just in so you've got a lot of skills with the chefs having to make all of those goods um, so yeah it's a very old traditional I would say sort of seaside hotel still with a bit of quite a lot of history which makes it very unique um, but well, Torquay generally has a lot of traditional old hotels as well. And it's right by the sea, so it's got lovely views. Um, access as well is quite very easy into Torquay, uh, especially by the train. Um, so if uh, couples coming away for honeymoons or breakaway, it's very nice. There's local areas people can go to as well. Um, so it's not just a hotel they can go to, it's, it's the areas about which can make up and fulfil their day. Um, even if they go a little bit further afield, they might go to want to go to Dartmouth, uh, Dartmoor even for a day out. It depends. Uh, wherever their wish might be, there's something around them local area. I think she really enjoyed mysteries and I think that was probably a, a big attraction for her and she was her, her plots are very very clever although the language she uses is not very intricate and that's why it's that's why I think it's ideal to learn English by reading Agatha Christie the plot structures are very intricate and they're very gripping. And I, I think she loved playing with the plots and the twists and the turns um, in murder mysteries. She's written over 70, over 70 novels. She's been translated into over 100 languages and she's sold around three billion copies of her novels around the world. So she's only been outsold by William Shakespeare and the Bible. So incredibly prolific and incredibly widely read. Jeg forstår godt, man kalder det her for den engelske Riviera, for her er simpelthen så mange ligheder med Middelhavet, og især på en dag som i dag, hvor solen den skinner. 
Marinaen er tæt pakket med både, og masterne de strækker sig op mod en stort set skyfri himmel. Folk de går langs promenaden med hunden, de løber på rulleskøjter, sidder på bænken og spiser nis og bare nyder, at det er sommer. De velstående pensionister i byen mødes hver dag om et helt særligt spil, der hedder bowling. Men det er ikke bowling, som vi kender det. That's the bias of the wood. The wood is weighted, so it turns always turns that way, which if so the dot has always got to be in the inside, because the wood is heavier that side than it is this side. Yeah, so it doesn't go straight. Doesn't never go straight. Ah. No. Never that's, go that's straight. That's a little uh, tricky, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because if it went straight, it'd be quite easy once you'd got the weight right. De har altså fantastisk humor, fordi jeg lige prøvede at skyde en gang, og øh, jeg tror, det gik meget godt af sådan et første kast, og nu har han lige inviteret mig til at komme og spille i aften, som han smager, så øh, det kunne, kunne egentlig være meget hyggeligt, men jeg tror, det var lidt begynderhelt. Prøv lige en gang. 